Here at Embedded World, there's loads of opportunities to see what's new, and that's no different here outside at the NXP Freedom Lab. We've been talking to Kyle to find out more about the new MCX series microcontrollers and how the Freedom Board and Espresso development environment helps you get started. So hi Kyle, it's great to see you here at the NXP Freedom Lab at Embedded World 2024. Now I've been looking closely at what you've been doing recently and I've seen that you've come up with a couple of new microcontroller families. The first one's the MX. Uh, MCXN. Can you tell us a little bit more about what's inside that? Yeah, so the MCXN is our latest product. Uh, it is a Cortex M33 device, but it's a multi core. It has an NPU for AIML type applications, and it also has a secure enclave, which is really high end security. It integrates our Edge Lock to Go technology inside of our SOC for the first time on the Edge. And you've also got the MCXA family. How is that different? So the MCXA kind of strips away the, the higher end cost out of the NPU core or the secure enclave. So then the, the user might only require maybe a high end analog or some of just the, the, the trustworthy peripherals that NXP provides. So it's more of a base uh, and microcontroller. And what sort of applications do you think um, customers will want to be developing with the A family? Sure, the A family, uh, because of the analog, because some of the motor control peripherals, uh, we're seeing a lot of motor control or industrial applications, maybe some sensors that require a little bit more uh, processing power. Um, but then other than that, just your general purpose uh, motor controller or microcontroller applications. And with the higher performance N series, I mean, where, where does uh, where are the limits for application development there? Yeah. So what we're we talk to customers. One of the benefits of NXP is our breadth of uh, AIML applications. What we've introduced now with the MCX N is that lower end introduction, that taking that uh, AIML to the edge. But what you're looking there is is maybe a face detection. Not recognition, it's not gonna know who I am, but yeah. it's gonna know that I'm a face that I've entered the room. Uh, you know, sound recognition, maybe a, a firecracker or uh, some uh, noise like a fire alarm. So those types of applications, once you get into the more high-end uh, facial recognition or uh, more advanced uh, de device detection, it, it may require more of our RT family or our IMX. Now, obviously, one of the, the key things about a microcontroller is that you can't really do very much with that black package and a few silver legs. Yeah. You need it on a board, and everybody's working very hard to make that easier to start with for application developers. What's your ecosystem on the hardware side to really get started quickly with, a, with an MCX? I'm glad you asked. I'm uh, the MCU Expresso ecosystem product manager. <laughs> And that, that's really how we go to market to support our customers is the MCU Expresso ecosystem. And what that means is we have the software tools and we have the hardware to get them started quickly. Um, I, in my hands, I have the new Freedom Board. And this is something that was very popular about five years ago and we kind of got away from what the customers liked. And so we've reintroduced the Freedom Board. What that is is a consistent form factor. It's highly leveraging shields so people can leverage technology that maybe we don't provide, uh, but they can snap those in through different form factors, and uh, but then take that same uh, module or shield and go to different platforms, whether it's the MCXA, MCXN, our MCXW uh, wireless family. They can use the same evaluation form factor for their evaluation. Now, the other sort of critical part of the ecosystem is the software development environment. Tell us a little bit more about what you offer there and how that works then with the Freedom Boards together. Exactly. So the board only gets you so far. You need to be able to program it, uh, find software. But what we found is that the customers are using so many different tools. And NXP wants to be flexible, as we say in the, uh, the term of our, our new uh, marketing. So we provide the customers both a uh, VS Code development environment, the popular MCU Expresso IDE, which is Eclipse-based uh, tool environment, but we also support IAR uh, for Embedded Workbench, and we support the uh, MDK tools from ARM. So we're allowing customers to use the new MCX family with whichever tool they prefer. And what's it like for the first debugging experience? Is there an embedded debugger on, on these boards so I can actually set breakpoints, run codes, and uh, have stop points? Absolutely. So uh, one, one key thing to mention is that this is a, a self-supporting board. And so what we have is the onboard debugger. And so customers don't need to use an external uh, debugger. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is the, uh, the, 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 the tools that we provide uh, allow them to do all the debug in Visual Studio Code. Uh, they can uh, detect both 
uh, NXP devices, PE Micro, and uh, Sager J-Link devices to de debug. Um, then once they get into VS Code or Eclipse, we have all the common debug capabilities for setting breakpoints, uh, viewing memory usage, uh, viewing variables, and, and your typical debug environment. One of the big challenges, of course, at the beginning of any development project is to understand how do I get the serial port running, how do I um, develop something around the Ethernet port or USB, or maybe can I find a library to access an E-squared PROM over SPI? Are those sort of libraries available in your development environment? Absolutely. So, uh, NXP's done a great job of packaging that into our MCU Expresso SDK, and that does provide those examples for using a peripheral or using a, a common requirement for a, an application. But what we've just recently introduced is our application code hub. And this is taking those base examples and, and you know, sort of stacking them together. It's actually developed by the NXP solution engineers and our internal engineering team. Now what they're working on with customers is being shared with customers when appropriate. And so in our tools, they're able to search on keywords, Ethernet or Wi-Fi or uh, you know, uh, AIML, and then they have a list of the appropriate example. And it really gets them started much quicker. Now, multi-core processors have been around for a long time. We've had them for ages in our PCs and laptops. We're, we're really starting to see sort of at least dual-core processors in that low microcontroller segment. And for many people, that's something new. How do you go about developing a, a dual-core application? How do you support that in the environment? And what do people need to think about? Sure. I think there's two things that I can speak to. The first is, how do you uh, set up a project or, or get an example that leverages those two cores? And, and NXP has a project uh, format or you know, manifest that specifically identifies which project goes with which core. It's also flexible in the UI to allow the customers to identify that and say, I want this core to do this, this core to do that. Uh, and so the tool has to have the ability to capture that project uh, makeup. And, and so that's the first thing. Yeah. Second thing is, well, okay, now I have my application and I want to evaluate it or troubleshoot. So now what they're doing is uh, that, that project needs to enable the debug sessions to, to uh, launch simultaneously. Um, both applications either have to be flashed or started in some synchronous manner. And then all the things we just spoke about, breakpoints, uh, watch variables, those things need to be synchronized between the debug sessions for those two cores. Yeah, yeah. So that's things that we're working on every day. Uh, I have lots of calls, and we're working on that uh, to make sure that we're providing that debug experience for multi-core, whether they're two M cores or potentially in the future an A core and an M core. Yeah. That's something that we know the customers are looking to, to work with. Now, the, the last point I wanted to touch on was the Edge AI applications. Obviously, as you said before, there's, there's enough machine learning processing in there to do things like uh, simple object detection, like I, I can see a face or I can see the, a picture of an animal. How do people get started with developing AI applications on an MCX? Yeah, even for me, uh, it's something that's not my expertise. But as the tool developer, I know it's important for the customers to get started. So that application code hub I mentioned before, uh, we really talked to our system engineers and we said, which applications have you been working on in AI and ML yeah. with lead customers? And, and these are the types of requests coming in. We've captured those examples and we've put them into the application code hub. So again, a person that would want to take advantage of the MCXN can go in there, type in face recognition or uh, image uh, recognition and it will be able to list examples for the MCX family. And they'll be able to import that project in either tool and get started. And it takes advantage of the, the models, uh, the NPU, uh, everything that NXP provides customers to use the AI ML uh, cores within the, the MCXM. Well, thanks ever so much, Carl, for your time and taking us through the Freedom Board and the complete software development environment. It's a really exciting time, I think, with the MCX family. Thanks. I, I appreciated the time. Thank you.